Yeah, and I think there's, it's a very old school way of thinking where there was just a couple of news outlets and you could potentially control those news outlets. Like the amount of times that I've had PR people or managers or entourage members or the, the person themselves hit me up and like, I don't want this out. You know, I remember Doja Cat after our interview, she said, I don't, I don't want that interview out. Mm. And I'm like, well, I'm still coming out. What do you think it was in particular that she wasn't cool with about that album? I had no idea. Or interview. I, the interview. I have no idea because I, I think I didn't answer. And then she was like, oh, it's like that. And then she like blocked me everywhere. Mm. Um, I have no idea. It ended up being her biggest interview, I think. I don't think she's <laughs> done a lot of other ones or at least not a lot of other. She, like, she's, done, she's done a few. She has. Okay. She's done a few, I think. But, you know, I feel like we, you probably asked the good questions. And yeah. then most of the other ones were sort of like flattery and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, that, that fluff. Yeah, Love bullshit. that was a weird one. Yeah, but no, she she uh, she was like, I don't want that interview coming out. You know, can I, can I buy it back from you or something? And I'm like, no. <laughs> well, I didn't answer. My, my answer was basically, I mean, she saw that I'd read it, and I just didn't answer. And then she got mad at me. She's like, oh, it's like that. And then she blocked me on all social media. You know, and then once all this stuff could start coming out of her, laughing at the, the racist jokes and right. the, the didn't do nothing song and mm. stuff like that, it's like, ah, right, flashback. <laughs> Flashback. It's right. coming back. Do you think people <laughs> went a little hard on her? It felt like that that was for people who are forgetting, that was like the week or maybe two weeks prior to basically the George Floyd thing happening and like this whole conversation getting kicked into really high gear. It felt like the world was really looking for somebody to to not be happy with at that moment and somehow she ended up getting yeah. subbed in and then she immediately got subbed out as soon as there was bigger stuff to talk about. I mean, I look at that as kind of some serious al allegations. People are like, I saw on Twitter it said Doja Cat and her only clans <laughs> followers. <laughs> I mean, at one point, only clans was trending. Was it? Yeah. Was it because of her? I think Metro Boomin might have said it, or, or somebody said it, but yes, it was definitely related to her. <laughs> that was the first time I heard it today. <clears throat> but um, like, let me tell you, like that song didn't do nothing. That term. The last time I heard that term was uh, the, the David Duke. <laughs> really? Was tweeting that about my interview with Talib Kweli. Wow, really? You know, David Duke, who was the main villain of Black Klansmen, you know, an actual Grand Dragon Ku Klux Klan member who I guess had some sort of public you know, office at some point, who was still active on social media. Right referred was said like yeah dj vlad just interviewed didn't do nothing to live quali and that's a term that is used by racists to make fun of black people getting killed by the police right as like oh that black guy didn't do nothing you know he just got killed for no reason like it's that, like that sarcasm like making fun of a person's you know situation it's a really ugly racist term right and she knew what that meant. And she turns around and did, did a song like that. I guess trying to, you know, and this was, I guess, early on before she popped, before right. Bitch I'm a Cow came out and started to really set her career off. So, you know, you do certain things early on to troll, to try to get on, and then those things end up biting you at the end of the day. Mm. So, I, I don't know. I, I kind of think that, think that the things that she said and the reaction people had was, was justified. Mm. And the question is whether she's going to continue on on that path or whether she's going to use that as a learning experience. I mean, shit, look what that Justin Bieber video, you know, with the N-word and one less lonely N-word. And like that was just an ugly, ugly song. You still see people revisiting and, and yeah. re-finding out about that on a consistent oh, basis, oh, yeah. even though I've known about it for like a decade. I In my interview with Talib Kweli once again. Oh, yeah, he didn't I, know about it. I remember that. I played that, yeah. it for him for the first time, and he was like, yo, <laughs> I've been around this guy. I've been backstage with him. Like, I had no idea this is, this is what he was doing in his spare time. Like, yo, mm. this is going to be uncomfortable next time. Uh, but look, people love him now. You got a new song with Quavo that's on the charts. Mm. 
like everyone forgot about it. It's, I mean, a hit song kind of fixes everything. Yeah, I mean, Eminem went away for like four or five years when mm -hmm. his whole little saga happened with that. Like that, people people sort of underrate the extent to which that really kind of changed the way that Eminem went about his life. You didn't see him in so many like mixed public settings where he was just yeah. around a bunch of random people. He got. It's, it feels like that made him a bit a bit more reclusive, which he was already pretty reclusive. Yeah, there's some other videos. Of M stuff. that never not, came out? Not exactly of M, but I've got some stuff in my inbox that I was like, oh, shit. Does it involve him performing on stage with people and saying it during a... I'm not, not going to say nothing else. Because I might have heard I'm just saying something there, there's something around that overall story that some, you know, that I've got stuff, stuff you know, some videos sent to me that was like, whew, this comes out, this is going to be a whole new... <laughs> What made you choose not to put it out, though? Um, because I felt like a lot of it was just sort of old news, and it wasn't exactly him. It was more like someone around him. Mm. And I have a relationship with, with certain people around him. Like, me and Royce are real, are real cool. So, like, in this particular situation, I just hit up Royce and say, hey, listen. Um, since I don't know him, him personally at all. But me and Royce have been cool forever, you know, for like 12, 15 years, something like that. So mm -hmm. I said up Royce and said, listen, I got this in my inbox. And I'm not going to show it to you or whatever, but this is what the video is of. I'm not going to put it out, but you should probably let your man know that it's being shopped around and it may come out and may bite him if it does. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to be the one to, to break it. Right. But yeah. Yeah, I get a lot of stuff like that, man. There, there's been a lot of stuff that I've. People think that I just put out anything that I can get my hands on, but, but, but there's there's a lot of stuff over the years that I've gotten just said. Either I'm not gonna fuck with it, or I'll I'll hit up the people who it's about and say, hey, listen, I'm gonna give you a heads up. This is this is kind of what's happening behind the scenes. And right. sometimes it's not even true. It's like this is nonsense. Like I don't even know these people. Like or sometimes it's like oh shit, okay, let me. Let me go talk to my family about this and, you know, prepare and so forth. But Royce was one person who I noticed dropping a comment or two unhappy with the conversation that we had about Dame. Oh, really? Yeah, he was. Uh, I didn't know that. I think he was in Dame's comments saying something like, I'll remember this uh, interview or something. Like, there was, there was a, a couple other people, too, that I took note of who were not exactly excited about the conversation we had about Dame. And uh, personally, I didn't feel like I went to, I mean, you you definitely made it perfectly clear how you felt about it. Yeah. I felt like I kind of kept it reined in a little bit, but uh, that didn't really stop me from getting the blowback there. Yeah, I mean, Dame talks shit about me. <laughs> like, like he's, how many videos of him calling me a culture vulture and, and all this other type of shit? Uh, I'm the one who uh, introduced him to Complex. I set up that business relationship for him. Like, I wasn't involved in it, but I made the introduction. And this is a company that I've been with since the beginning, that we both made millions of dollars together. So this is an important relationship. I go and bring this guy in. He doesn't instantly get the money that he was expecting to get. And then he starts trashing everyone at the company and starts calling the president a culture vulture. And, and, and it's like, yo, like, I made this introduction. And here you are shitting all over this relation, you know, the, these people who I respect, and I made the introduction. Like, you don't, and I was like, this dude don't have respect for nobody. He just does not have respect for anybody. Mm -hmm. And he does not care. I mean, I, I remember there was this one part when me and him, when we, when we first met, there was this, uh, this short film um, called Word on the Street that I was trying to push to, to various Hollywood outlets. At one point, like there was one film company that I was interested in, but no one really bit. So uh, he, he said it, and he, he, he saw it, and he loved it. And um, so I, I made the introduction with the guy who put it together and everything else like that. And then when me and him kind of had our falling out, that guy, not knowing our situation, hit him up, said, hey, do you still want to do it? And Dame's response was like, yeah, I want to do it, but I want to cut Vlad out. Uh -huh. This is the type of person that we're dealing with. People are like, oh, Dame is such a great business person. Like, nah, nah. He's a, Who's he's saying a, that? He's a bridge burner. Yeah. He burns bridges with everybody. Didn't he just get sued and lose? Who, who did he get sued by? There was like this woman who I guess uh, they're saying that he stole her script or something like that, and, and she won in court. Right. So 
And just, just look where, where everyone is. Like, look at where Jay is and look at where Dame is. Yeah. And when you, when you look at these partnerships, you have to say, because when you have a successful partnership and people go their separate ways, all the people are going to say, well, that was all me. Or I was, I, was a, I was the main part of it. I was a big part of it. But when you split, you kind of see where the talent lies based mm-hmm. on the person who continues to do well versus the people that just fall off. And you can just look at the Rockefeller situation and just it speaks for itself. Mm. If he was really that dude, wouldn't he be just, he'd make another J. Right. As opposed to trying to be a rock singer at is that still going? 50 some years old. Like, is that still happening? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. You're the one who saw it. I did see it. I saw it in real life and real I've, life. I've seen clips online as well. Yeah, I mean, my whole thing with Dame is I, I, my only issue with him is that I felt like through doing that podcast that we were going to get to a point where we were going to be able to have really good conversations. And after like doing three or four episodes, I just started to realize like, oh, there's, there's no way. This is definitely absolutely <laughs> yeah. not happening. Like he just he argues in such a way that he really wants to win the argument and doesn't really give a fuck about the actual integrity of the conversation. Yeah, well, I don't think Dame actually talks to you. He talks at you. Mm. He just talks, he talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and talks. And you're sitting there going like, it's almost like you walk out the room and come back and he's still talking about right. the same topic. Yeah, he, he doesn't listen, man. Um, yeah, like I said in our podcast, I think that he's an interesting person, an interesting figure, and has an, a very interesting history. Mm. And uh, if he was just more of a, a respectful human being, people would fuck with him more. And I'm sure he's going to see his guy, I don't give a fuck. I don't know. Fuck Vlad TV. Fuck no John. I don't need them anyways. They're all culture vultures. But it's like... Okay, but the more people that don't fuck with you, the harder it is to do what you're trying to do. Right. You know, people do these interviews and people watch and go, eh. Especially when talking about successful people. Like, successful people don't have to fuck with you. They have options to do whatever they want. When you run your own company and the company's doing really well, you've gotten to that point by doing things that, that feel right. Not because, oh, I'm just going to make a bunch of money over here, so let me just get insulted for the next three hours just so I can make a few dollars. Like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Right. Yeah. I could totally imagine, like, but that's the thing is that if he were to just consistently make YouTube content that was in any way, like, structured in such a way that it was appealing to the audience, but he won't even, he won't just, like, do a YouTube channel and, like, put his stuff on it because he believes that he's building a streaming company that, and that putting his stuff on YouTube would be in some way, like, a compromise. If you, someone, someone sent me this thing. <clears throat> where it was like some like 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 uh you know American gangster type interview or whatever and the logo kind of looked like the Vlad TV logo <laughs> in the, the bottom it really? was actually kind of funny I mean it was exactly like it but it was like the same kind of color scheme and whatever else I'm like yeah I <laughs> The thing, the thing right. that I got uh, some heat for too, though, in particular, uh, I heard Joe Budden say on his podcast is he just said, "I didn't like how Adam was judging how Dane was interacting with his kids because there was this like reality show clip that came yeah, out." Yeah. And to be fair, his kids are like adults in this clip. Like I'm pretty sure they're both over the age of 18, and he's arguing with them. And I, of course, you could say that you know it's reality TV. The way that they're going to skew this is definitely different than how it might really have been. For me, I don't really. I could definitely see how it could be seen as distasteful to be commenting on how somebody takes care of their three-year-old or whatever, their four or five-year-old, because they're so young and it is this very, you know, particular thing. When it comes to, like, how you're dealing with your grown-ass kids on a reality show that you chose to put out there into the world, I don't really feel like there's anything inherently bad about having an opinion about how somebody relates to their grown-ass kids once they're adults on TV. Well, I've, I've never seen the, the clip, mm. right? So I, I can't comment specifically about what Dame did in that particular clip. But like I remember, me and um, I think I think me and me and TK TK Kirkland were talking about this about how, like for example, like the Dwayne Wade situation. Mm. Like, you have this. How old is this son? Like thirteen, something like that. And he's transgender. He's transitioning. Whatever. <clears throat> and uh, people feel like, well, you shouldn't say anything about about that child because it's just a just a child. But but TK kind of made the point, like, all right, well, if this was your own private dealings, then yeah, you're right. It's all private. It's really not no one's business. But when you go on a promo tour 
to promote your son's transgender transition, whatever you want to call it, then people are going to have their opinion. Hmm. So if you want to go on a show and show the way that you're talking to your kids, mother, father, relative, friends, whatever, people are going to comment about it. So you're going to get mad at people commenting about something that someone's putting out and they sign release forms and they agree to be edited and agree to be broadcast and stuff like that. You're mad about that? Well, then they should never should have put it out. You should turn turn around and point at the person who, who actually did it. Mm. Dame didn't have to say what he said on camera, but he wanted to make for interesting content, obviously. Or maybe he was just being him, and that's just how he deals with his kids. I don't know. I've never seen the clip, but for someone to say, well... Adam shouldn't comment about that. It's a damn TV show. Mm. <laughs> You're supposed to comment on it. Right. Cut it out. Yeah. What's up, y'all? It's Vlad from Vlad TV. Make sure you check out my full interview on No Jumper.